Hello guys again and welcome to my new video. Before I will do the standard intro explanation, let me say this. Huge thanks for 1800 subscribers, you guys really rock, 2k is just behind the corner. Secondly, sorry for posting of the 4 day schedule. I'm heading for a 3 week vacation soon, so I will be posting weekly next month and a half instead of not posting during vacation. But I have some bangers planned, so stay tuned. This time I prepared special highlights video for you, including my two weeks highlights with prowling, carving, crossbow and spare. Be ready to fight outgeared fights versus Gucci guys as usual. Get really sweaty in intense moments. And all with voice commentary to help you understand how I fight with some deaths included. Sit tight and enjoy. Tirate crossbow versus A3 double bladed. Saw him popping boots with stun run, so kited to refill my food. Didn't do see yet to not scare him away. Kept damaging while being ready to soak his first engage. Using just Guardian Helm as Cleric Rope has long cooldown and he used both his offensives already. Classic combo QQEWQQ. Matching boots. Unlucky that my Martlock cape procked already. Call Troop on mob to get to him faster. Again, QQ, then E. Was super late with defensives and nearly died because of my mistake. Miraculously lived with 15 HP, Cleric Rope. As soon as it ends, chain it with Guardian Helmet. Boots to gain HP and distance. And finishing with E, because bad guys don't look at explosions. T-8 crossbow versus 6 for a repair pause. He used E to catch up with me, so I knew I can go for full damage combo QQ E W Q Q. Unfortunately, I messed up my defensives, used Guardian Helmet to remove bleed stacks, should have used my cleric rope on his inferno shield, and didn't match his boots, which would refill nearly half of my bar. He purged my Martel Cape well and I procced my Cleric Rope last second on his bleed, but mistakes caused me the fight, unlucky. If I was in 8-1, I could have been rich. Super easy fight versus 6-3 Prowling. Knew he was going to jump on me, so I used Guardian Helmet, but he didn't chain, so it went wasted. Look how just EQQQ took 3 bars of his health. Xbow hits like a truck. He wasn't double Helion Jacket, so he had no defensives in 1v1, so it was GG. Unfortunately for him he played it terrible, even transfer with my E-bomb on him, so he can take some extra damage. Versus 4-4, 6-3 Dual Swords. Didn't care he had 1k more HP than me, immediately went for him. E to put him in combat, call troops on mobs to get closer. Always keep eyes on your stacks to use double Q combo, it's one of Crossbow's biggest threat. Guardian Helmet for his increased attack speed from stacks. Cleric Rope for his increased attack speed from E. Waiting for his HP to get into the execute range of EQ combo. Always use your E before his undead cape to save the kill. But tier 7 Badon had different mind and just dindy windy procced his undead cape without thinking. I put back this bad Don to his place with EQQ for 75% of his HP and went to chase dual swords. At this point there is no way he can win, I still had Martlock cape. So I just patiently waited out his Mistwalker jacket and one last auto attack finished the job. Showcase how insanely strong this build is in 1v1 versus 5 4 8 3 full spec blood attack with more than 1k HP difference. Didn't match his boots as I had double Q ready. Double Q into E and W, but messed up another WQ with defensive guardian helmet. Late OC. Using advantage of my boots, which he doesn't have, to deal more extra damage before his next combo is up. Damn, this blood letter must be a princess if he has even knights protecting him. Let it grow, but I don't execute threshold. Immediate guardian helmet to postpone execute a little bit more. His E went through my Martlo cape, which saved me. Now he had no boots and I still had mine, but I got scared of red so disengaged, thinking the curse stuff will go for juicy bloodletter. But my oh my, was I wrong again. Guys, learn to inspect please. My build is less than 3 million and we had exactly same HP left. Versus 8-1 bloodletter who swapped on Inferno Shield. With Inferno Shield he has not enough damage to brawl with me, so I just spit my Qs and Es with always using the double Q buff. He started with his E, which means I have at least 10 more seconds for his execute, so I save my potion and cleric rope for later. Catching potential is great when you pair boots with cult troops on mobs. His execute is close, so I use cleric rope before he procs my martlock cape. 
He even missed his E, so I gave him my E for a final goodbye, but he didn't wave back, which was kinda rude. Now it's time for some carving fun. Normally I don't fight fire stuffs, if I do I die or run, but this one had weird build, so I gave it a try. Swaps to Inferno Shield, as it's more useful versus fire stuff without firewall. He missed his first E into mob, so I go fully in, even get close with my E. He got scared and went into Assassin Jacket, which is great trade for me, as I still has my jacket ready. Keeping my stacks with mobs around. Oh, he scared me here a little bit, but he has no Assassin Jacket, so I use my Inferno Shield to get better hand at trade. Keeping my purge for his boots, as he will have them earlier because of Omelet. I can actually finish him just with my E. Never mind, purging the boots is better option. GG. T raid carving versus T raid primal stuff. He had upper hand with Martlock cave. Immediately engage with W and E, staying away as his brawl is better when he has all cooldowns up. Beast Walker jacket for his bear form to avoid stun. He will use this damage buff more well than me as his DPS is higher. Forging his boots immediately so he doesn't restore HP and used mine well to dodge his stun again. But he feared me right before my W will execute him and he has range damage, I don't, so I need to be careful when chasing. Using advantage of my undead cape but got hit by another W and next Q will just kill me, so I keep my distance to use the world most renowned cabbage soup cheese. As soon as I start regening I pop cabbage soup and immediately turn back on him using E to get close and purging his boots to get him in combat. Waiting with my Mistwalker jacket for his stun again. Easy. May the Lord praise the soup cheese. Remember boys, it is just 5k per piece, always bring up. t carving versus 8-1 bloodletter. He got his cheeks clapped earlier, so I had to dismount him and use everything to catch so he can believe he has a chance when I purge his boots instead of stalker jacket. God, these mist color bloodletters are terrible at understanding that they can't brawl. Boy panicked so hard he purged the mob. WE to finish this fiasco, grab the loot and move to the next weapon. Sorry guys, didn't play much carving in past weeks. But before we move on to the next weapons, let's see some legendary chests and also a couple of Gucci loot in regular chests. I still have to show some spare fights and we will finish with insane prowling kills. We can count the kill before still as opening chests. Now I'm going to fight 8182 Fire. This spare build is great at killing fire stuffs. Deflect for his E and also Mercenary Hood to interrupt his full casting E, which as you can see worked perfectly. Keeping my deflect for his next E and meanwhile just brawl while moving from side to side to make it harder for him to hit his Qs. Damn, I love to see fire stuff getting their E deflected back. But he still has cleric rope, so I try to be careful to not proc it. Got unlucky because my Q procked it even before the animation started. Really scary moment now, but Deflect saved me and next Q procked my added cape. Interrupt for his Q was my lucky moment, now I stopped tunnel visioning and move more to side so I don't get hit by his next Qs. But god, the trash rate is worse than my carving Ws. Versus t raid overcharged crossbow. Came to chest to see him just killing t raid spare who procked his martlock cape, which meant big advantage to me. Big brain moment, stepping on his cult troops to give him speed buff, only to chase him with my boost to deny it with cripple and use the extra damage. Mercenary hood to get less damage from his E. Waiting with my next cripple when he uses Cult Rook to deny him speed buff again and gain extra damage to finish the job. Now 
got lucky with escaping tier 6 red spare and collected my loot afterwards. Versus full 8-3 round breaker. We had a little chit chat in Mist about his build and he wanted to try his build and I wanted to try mine versus him, so we ended up fighting. As my brow potential is worse because of IP I have to deal at least bar and half damage before I fully commit to the fight. I was lucky as he missed his first E hard. He used my Stalker Jacket, which he answered with Mist Walker Jacket instead of Fint Cowl, I should have kited a little bit again and not stay in brow longer. Which I realized after another Mist Impaler. W abilities are clearly my enemies. My cooldowns are back soon and he is missing Mist Walker Jacket. Time to come back for another trade. I have really bad habit at using boots for no reason, because I shouldn't use them here. Knew he will go for E after triple Q, so I cancelled it with my E. Stalker hood into Stalker Jacket and fight is looking great for me, only if I had better cape and not 4-0, which meant I lost mana super fast. I didn't realize at the moment how big are my mana problems and when it hit me, it was too late to disengage. Anyway, it was a good fight, so it belongs to the video. Versus 5473 Bloodletter. Before the already before and I had to disengage because he popped my undead cape. But I'm man of a fight, so I went back again even without my cape. He has torch and higher IP stalker jacket, so I swapped to Inferno Shield instead. Also kept my impaler as Cripple will sacrifice my damage too much in this fight. Trade looks nice, and he used Stalker Jacket. I answered immediately with Inferno Shield, which was a mistake as he baited it very well. I should have waited a little bit more with Inferno Shield. He even perfectly dodged my impaler, I should have waited for point blank range instead. I'm getting under 40% HP, so I pop my health potion. Having no defensives up, I decide for a smart disengage using my impaler to slow him and E away to gain distance. Combined with boots, it was perfect trade for me. My Inferno Shield is soon up, so I went back in. Tried to purge his jacket with my Helmet of Valor, but I was blind to see, meanwhile he used his E when I was above 40% HP. So I got scared for no reason, because I thought he still has it ready. If I realized it at the moment and chased him, I could have killed him with E, Q, W, but hesitated because thought his E is up. And I just gave him enough time to recharge his E cooldown again, I should have waited 10 seconds longer to get my Inferno Shield back up. But I didn't. So I died. I didn't play spare much, so that's the only good fights I got. I'm still average at spare, so I prefer other weapons, such as Prowling. Here I killed tier 7 double bladed and when I tried to inspect people witnessing the crime, I accidentally hit 4483 double bladed, which gave him option to dismount without cooldowns. Opa. I'm in tier 8 Prowling, can I win this fight? He used both Stalker Jacket and Cultist Cavill at the same time, but I didn't want to use Mist Walker Jacket as he will just disengage and leave. So I purged his jacket and ate his damage while in Cultist Cavill. Transforming to deal extra damage, late OC as usual. I transformed and he used his stun run without his jacket ready, so I realized I actually can win this even if I pushed it too far with baiting. Waiting for his Stalker Jacket and Cultist Cavill to cover in my Mist Walker Jacket. Got my undead cape popped, which is ideal, as he can't see what happens next. Holy moly, that was close, but look at that beauty I got. He paid 8 millions just to get back the weapon. Versus full 8-3 double bladed on Guardian Armor and Purity Cavill. I'm 8-1 in this fight. Should have swapped to Inferno Shield as it's better versus blade double bladed. As soon as he used E to get close and finally failed, I turned on him. Remember, new Guardian Armor can't be purged as it is channeled now. In Prowling, he can't out damage me, so as soon as his E is back up, he disengaged. But I follow up with nice W from far, which gave me charge for Panther lead. He fully disengaged now with his boots. Again, stun and jump away. It's a safe way to play double bladed, but suitable for cowards only. So I change his mindset and start kiting away, turning myself into prey. It worked, but the trade was even, so again kiting. He turned back in, and knowing his only threat is now Purity Cowl, I sidestep it and immediately turn back. He's fucked as he has no boots as soon as I get 4 stacks, I go for execute. 
and he lived with bloody 34 HP. For real. I couldn't catch him, so I dismounted two reds to help me catch him, but of course, all three turned on me, so I died. Versus 5, 4, 7, 3 double bladed stuff. I'm 8, 1. W under me to postpone his start. Transform to deal some damage and immediately transform back to not get stunned in form. Unfortunately, ate all of his cultist cabal with my spells, which gave me big disadvantage in the fight. Got some of the trade back from the transform damage, but he still has his buff. This time disengage on his cultist cabal like I should. This guy is playing his trades well, I need to be more careful. My crucial mistake was not realizing my Mist Walker jacket is ready again here, but he was in execute range, so I went for triple Q and managed to kill him. And survived, but bad habit of immediate transforming back meant that I got hit by one more tick from his cultist cover and we killed each other. So, no every highlight is a nice edited kill. Sometimes we all got unlucky and die in a process, with or without our mistakes. It happens and it's part of Albion, that is why I show also many of my deaths and I ask other content creators to do the same, to remove the fog of YouTubers are so good that they don't die. Remember, we will rarely grow as players if we don't look back at our deaths and try to improve based on why we died and that is why I try to teach you guys my mindset. Hopefully, we will meet sometimes in Mist and you will beat my ass with stuff I learned you. I will continue fighting everyone I meet even at cost of dying because my silver allows me to die a lot and I also can gain silver back fast by playing easy meta builds such as the Bloodletter one. You should on the other side pick your fights and work your way up until you get confident enough to take even the harder looking ones. Thank you guys again for your amazing support and remember, if you like my content, click that subscribe button. It doesn't hurt to do and it helps me a lot by increasing range where my videos get. See you soon and don't forget to join new giveaway. Now I will pick a lucky winner for the premium and the surprise. Remember, if you win, you need to add me in-game and also on Discord. Check the description to see how you can do it. Remember to join new giveaway for 7 day premium and another surprise, this time in form of awakened weapon. You need to like the video, comment your in-game nick and be subscribed to the channel.